Hi, I'm Donald and welcome to the channel. I've been creating easy meals that make your life a little bit easier in the kitchen for over 10 years now. But this channel is all about a little slice of our family life and home cooking. I'll be showing you how to get the most out of your kitchen to next level your dishes for maximum flavor. So stick around, hit that subscribe button and let's get cooking. Hi guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Today we have a very delicious recipe for you. It is a twist on a classic, a chorizo bolognese. All that meaty, gorgeous, rich sauce, but with the spice of chorizo running through it. It's very simple to make, it's totally delicious, and it's a perfect midweek meal for the family. So, we're gonna start it off by chopping up our veggies. I've got the classic combination of some onions, some celery, some carrot, and some garlic. So, I'm gonna start off by chopping these up nice and fine. Spaghetti bolognese is just one of those childhood classics. It's what I grew up with. In fact, I think I was pretty much raised on a diet of spaghetti bolognese, Irish stew, and shepherd's pie. Um, despite being Irish, it was, an, it was a recipe that my mom made all the time. And I think it's because of the ease and the, you know, just how accessible it is to make during the week. I was at a point where if we got spaghetti bolognese, we'd start complaining because we got it so much during the week. Um, we were very ungrateful children, as you can imagine. So I have my, um, my chopped up ingredients. I have the celery of the carrot and the onions. I'm gonna add to this our garlic and pop that in there. So now that we have our veggies chopped off, let's talk about our meaty ingredients. We've got some beef mince, and what you're looking for is a beef mince that has a good fat content running through it. That's where the flavor is coming from, and you're gonna get that if you look for something that has a higher fat content. So that's what we're after uh, with that. For our chorizo, I'm looking for more of a, a firm chorizo rather than the softer ones you can get. So something that's gonna hold its shape but will break down over time in the cooking process. So I'm just gonna finally chop this up. Now, look, I know purists will be throwing up their nose at this point because chorizo is certainly not the traditional ingredient into bolognese, but it is one of those great ingredients that is just a powerhouse of flavor. It's all those kind of spicy paprika, red oils that seep into any dish it's added to. And it's just a lovely thing that I always come back to. If I have a little bit of chorizo in the fridge, I know I'm kind of on my way to making something interesting or something uh, that'll make for a really great dinner. So once you've kind of run the knife through all those lovely little bits of chorizo, this is pretty much good to go. And like with any good recipe, it's all about the prep you do in advance to make your life a little bit easier. So if you imagine we have our veggies, we have our chorizo, I have all the other ingredients laid out. So now it's a case of bringing it together in the pan so that you get something that is really rich and flavorful. Okay, we're gonna start off by frying off both the chorizo and the beef mince over in the egg. Right. So uh, I have to tell you that I have not, I'm not a great aga cook. This is a new contraption to me. I actually, my mum had one growing up, but um, it's definitely something that takes a bit of getting used to. And there's a whole thing of like regulating the heat between the two. Um, it's very down to nabby, uh, but I will tell you, it does fry off and it roasts beautifully. So we're gonna start off by frying the beef in here first. So a little drizzle of oil. And once that's nice and hot, it's time to get in there with our beef mince. And all you're looking for is to brown this off until you have it kind of almost cooked through. So straight into the hot pan and get in there with your wooden spoon and break it up. I always think the one thing people get wrong when it comes to frying off minced meat is not frying it off for long enough because initially when it hits the pan, it kind of tends to stick a little bit and then you start moving it around and breaking it up. But at that point then, a lot of liquid comes out and people kind of panic a little bit. But don't be put off by that. What you're gonna to allow to happen is for that to cook out until the liquid is kind of completely evaporated and you get left with something that's kind of a little bit more browned and crispy. So keep with it, stick with it, and keep that heat high. Now a good little trick, and to know that your, your meat is starting to kind of lose a lot of that liquid and starting to kind of brown off, is the noise. The sizzle has changed from kind of a bubble to a very sort of light kind of crispy sizzle. And that's a good sign that the water is evaporated and it's gonna start taking on a bit of color. Okay, we are in business. We've got sizzle action, we've got browning action. Time to get the meat out of the pan. So just remove it with a slotted spoon and you're just gonna take it out and place it onto a plate. 
And while we're still on the move and we're still on the heat, we're gonna get the chorizo straight in there to release all those lovely oils and get them nice and crisp. So, onto the heat, chorizo in. You don't need any oil, it's gonna release its own and cook that out until it's nice and crisp. It literally only takes a minute or two and once it's kind of, you can see when it's done because the oils have been released, the chorizo has gone a little crispy and the smell in the kitchen is always a good sign to know that you've got good things going on. Now this is where we kind of, uh, Italian meets Spanish and we bring together a little marriage of chorizo and bolognese all in the one go. So moving along, we're gonna get that oil straight back on the heat and then get our veggies straight in. So let's keep on cooking. The lovely combination here is the carrot, the celery, the onion, and I'm gonna put the garlic in just as I have it now, but I would normally hold it back just so that it doesn't burn, but I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit once it's kind of taken on a bit of, a bit of the heat and it started cooking. So we're gonna slowly sweat this out. Give that a toss through and instantly it just gets coated in all those gorgeous oils. So as soon as the heat has kind of taken on the veggies and the oils have got in there as well, I'm gonna take it off the high heat and swap it over to our sort of lower heat plate here. And to this now, I wanna add in some sea salt and some black pepper. So always be generous at every stage of cooking when it comes to seasoning. You know, you don't wanna over season it, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that each layer of flavor is in there. So once you have the salt and the black pepper in there, I also wanna add some aromatics, and that comes in the form of rosemary. Rosemary, when it comes to beef, is just a perfect marriage in terms of flavor. So I finally chopped up some rosemary leaves, and I'm just gonna pop that straight in. Give that a quick stir, and instantly, the smell in the kitchen is fantastic. As rosemary and beef, it always kind of evokes really sort of dark and delicious and deep and earthy flavor. So it's a great herb to add in. So once the meat's in there, give it a quick stir through. And at this point now, we're gonna take it off the low heat and stick it on the high heat and deglaze it with some red wine. Get that bubbling up, simmer it down for a little bit, then add the beef stock and our tomato puree and get a really, really rich sauce going on. Once you've got it to this point, this is the point where you need to take the foot off the accelerator. It's time to kind of just cruise a little bit. We're gonna make this go nice, low and slow. And to add a little bit of sweetness in here, a little bit of brown sugar, I'm gonna add more maybe at the end if I need it. Just give that a quick stir and that is literally all you need to do. We're gonna get a lid on there. It's gonna slowly cook out on the lower heat for about an hour until you're left with a really thick and unctuous and really indulgent ragu. I am always a fan of the types of recipes that take low and slow cooking. You can go off and do things in the kitchen and come back to an absolute piece of magic, just like this. Really rich sauce now. At this point now, we're gonna cook off our pasta. So I have a big pot of water that's just come up to the boil. We're gonna add in our parpadelle. It's got plenty of salt in there, so that it's nicely seasoned. And you can use tagliatelle, you could use linguine, you could use spaghetti. There is a traditional um, pasta that you use with bolognese, but this is not a traditional bolognese, so we're using parpadelle. So parpadelle goes in, and let's get that pasta cooked and served up. Now that the pasta's drained, our meat, our ragu is completely cooked. This is my trick to getting really good bolognese because I always kind of grew up with spaghetti that was just completely uncoated with sauce with the meat sauce dumped on top. This is how you make really spectacular bolognese. You take a little bit of that meat sauce and pop it into the pasta. And to this, we're gonna add a little bit of the pasta water as well and coat that pasta completely in a bit of rich tomato sauce. It's just a little bit of that sauce and a tiny touch of the pasta water. And then you just go in there, like the clappers, 
and give it a good mix through until it's nicely coated. And that means that you have pasta that's coated in the sauce. It's not just sitting there nude on its own on the plate. And you have something that's really interesting going on. So when you serve that up with the meat sauce, it looks great. So it's time to serve up. And the great thing about that chorizo in there means that you're left with this really unctuous sort of fatty sauce with all the beautiful flavor from the chorizo that's running through it. Now, final touches, a little bit of Parmesan and a really great ingredient, particularly if you've used the, sun, the chorizo, is some sun blush tomatoes. It just adds a great little pop of flavor, really, really beautiful bursts of that really kind of sweet and intense flavor you get from sun blush tomatoes. So pop them in there and then a really generous grating of some Parmesan, or you could use Pecorino, but you just want nice little shavings. And I think that's it. Oh, a little bit of basil. If you want it, it's there. I like the idea of just kind of little bits of freshness, particularly with a very rich and dark sauce like this. And last but not least, I always think just a little drizzle of olive oil to finish the dish, and some salt and pepper. And now, my friend, is a seriously good bolognese with a bit of a twist. So, now all that's left to do is dive in and try some. I wanna get some of that Parmesan, I wanna get some of that meat sauce, and definitely make a complete, absolute mess of it. Mm. You know what, actually, the chorizo isn't super strong in this. It's got a little layer of spice there, but overall, it's like, a, it's like adding butter into it. It's just really rich and indulgent. So you're not getting like an extreme spice, but instead you're getting this gorgeous thing that just kind of envelops your mouth with really deep, dark flavor. Mm. As you can see, I'm a fan. I hope you are too. If you want the full recipe, I will give it to you. It's in the box below and you'll get it over my website. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment below, letting me know if I haven't completely bastardized the old bolognese sauce, but it is one that is worth trying. It's a bit of a twist and it's totally delicious. But for now, all that's left to do is sign off. This is totally delicious, so I'm off to eat it in the corner. Goodbye.